Welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, 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 we are just days away from players reporting to spring training. The time has come already, already. There's a lot of excitement in the air, and the Pakoda projections have just been put out. And they actually have the Mets in the playoffs. Really? I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Okay, so we are going to go over that. But I just want to preview some other cool, interesting videos that we have to come. So please stay tuned. We got a video about who is essentially the king of New York. Uh, there was a topic of conversation on the radio the other day. And they were talking about the Mount Rushmore of New York sports athletes. And they were talking about... Who is higher on the Mount Rushmore? Is Aaron Judge on the top? Is Pete Alonso even on the Mount Rushmore? It, or is he higher than Aaron Judge? So we are going to have a video coming about, about that very shortly. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe. And then we got another video coming about coming out about Andy Martino and about how he was wrong about the Mets' current payroll situations. So you're going to want to stay tuned and subscribe. Okay, but to get into today's video, we're going to look at the Pakoda projections and about how they actually project the Mets to finish within the top six, therefore making the playoffs. So there were a lot of interesting things that I took note about these projections, and I want to share that with you right now. But first, let's take a look at the projections, and we'll go through it together. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we go. We have the Pakoda projection, and the Pakoda projection have notoriously been accurate for many teams, many teams. I've noticed in the past couple of years, the Mets, they haven't really got the Mets number right, but nonetheless, the Pakoda has been very good at getting these numbers halfway decently right, and most often, pretty darn accurate. So where do they have our New York Mets? As we see, and actually, you know what? First, I just want to highlight the thing that I did find interesting is they have the world champion Texas Rangers projected to win 86 games. They have Houston Astros 95, um, New York Yankees 94 wins. Um, so that was just a quick note. But to get to our New York Mets, they have the New York Mets essentially projected to win 83.6 games. And from what I've been reading and from what a lot of people have been saying, you know what? That, that's pretty darn accurate. People are saying right now that the Mets are a fringe player of team, that the addition of a bat, a proven hitter, a DH might be the difference from them actually like, you know, doing some damage. I mean, if they get a decent bat, this could push the number four or five games up which could have them approaching 90 wins. So this 84-game projection by Pakoda seems pretty darn accurate to me. But to get into more about the projections and things that I found interesting, you see the Philadelphia Phillies. They're projected to, to win 84 games. And I've been saying that, you know, everybody's been saying Atlanta's better, Philly's better. And I know Atlanta right now look a lot better on paper. They do. They really do. But Philadelphia, and I've been saying this, they're not that much better. They're not. And Pakoda basically highlights that. They're not that much better. Now, let's look at the competition. You have Atlanta with 100 wins. You have the LA Dodgers with 101 wins. Those two teams, obviously, they're projected to make the playoffs. Other teams, the next highest win total that we have in the and in the, basically – the whole National League, is the St. Louis Card Cardinals. They're projected to win 85.5 games. Right then and there, that's the third most wins in, in the entire National League. Kind of just t shows you how watered down the National League is projected to be. So if I'm David Stearns, there's no reset. There's no time to say, hey, you know what? Let's sit back and relax. If there's an opportunity this year because the National League is war watered down and you only essentially have L.A. and Atlanta um, in your way, you know what? you got to really take advantage of that because you don't know what can happen. You know, injuries happen. Things don't turn out the way you think they will, so you just never know. Okay, but just to get back to that, so you have Atlanta projected to have more wins. You have uh, you have the LA Dodgers. 
Then you have the St. Louis Cardinals at 85.5 wins. Then you have Arizona at 85.2. Um, you have Philly at 84.3. So you have one, two, three, four, five. And that would essentially have the Mets as the sixth most wins. So you have Atlanta, you have Philadelphia, you have St. Louis, you have Los Angeles, you have Arizona, that's five teams, and then you have the Mets projected to win 83.6 games. So according to Pakoda, they would have the sixth seed, therefore essentially making the playoffs. Will it work out this t- way? Obviously, probably not. Things are bound to change. Teams are bound to surprise. I mean, you know, which pretty interesting and uh, to note, Baltimore Orioles, they won a crap load of games last year. They just acquired Corbin Burns, and they're essentially uh, projected to win 86.6 games. Now, I know they have a lot tougher division in the AL East, but still, you would think that they're pre- they would be projected to win more than two games than the two or three games than the New York Mets. So I, I, at this point, like you really never know, but this is a good indication just to show you that the Mets aren't far. They're really not. If David Stern picks up a bat and he finds a way to get an ace, the Mets could easily win 90 games, not because they're juggernaut, but as you can see here, the NL really at this point, there's not many dominant teams. There is a path. And if there's only one or two teams that are clearly superior to you, that really tells me that there is not much competition and anything essentially can happen. I want your comments. Let me know. Do you see the Mets as um, a borderline playoff team? Do you see them potentially being able to make a big run with one or two more uh, moves? Because I I do. I do. I mean, really, besides the LA Dodgers and Atlanta, there is no juggernaut team. There really is not. I know you have up-and-coming teams like Arizona. They're considered like a young, up-and-coming team, um, even like Cincinnati. But I don't think they're ready to make that gigantic step. So right now, if the New York, if you're the New York Mets and you're in a, you know, more or less a transition year, um, which I don't even like to use that term. You know, like David Stern says, every year is an opportunity. And every year is um, our goal is to make the playoffs. So I think that, that is wholeheartedly the goal. And folks, let me give me one moment. I want to make this screen a bit. Okay, folks. So like I was saying, it is essentially important for the New York Mets to seize the moment. There aren't many superior teams. They're just not. They're just not. So the Mets right now with their resources, with right now, supposed superior president in place who knows what the hell he is doing, you take advantage of it. You just never know what happens. This is baseball. Anything can happen. Like I've I've been telling people who have been resistant to the Mets and saying the Mets are far off, you look at the Texas Rangers last year. They were not projected to win the World Series. And like I mentioned, they're only projected to win 86 games. So a lot of people aren't giving, didn't give the Texas Rangers credit last year and are certainly not giving them credit this year. Year. So that just goes to show you that you that that the Mets who are projected to win 84 games aren't far off. They're just not. They are not far off. Now, a couple important dates. Anybody who's wondering when does spring training start? I got the dates right here. Important dates for us. So we have um, the Mets, February 12th, pitchers and catchers report. February 14th. Pitchers and catchers' first official workout. And February 17th, position players will report. And February 19th, you have your first full squad workout. So I hope these dates are accurate. This is what I've looked up and researched. So um, if they're not accurate, I apologize. But this is the most recent um, news that I've seen. Okay, so like I said, if you're listening to this, I, I really appreciate you. I appreciate you. I really do. Um, I want to hear your feedback, any comment, drop them. Like I said, we have some interesting 
topics coming up, some, um, you know, um, topics that I, I want you to debate with me. We're going to have a video, like I mentioned, uh, Pete versus Aaron's Judge. Who is higher on the Mount Rushmore of New York sports athletes? Who is higher? Um, we're going to have a debate about other players as well who's going to be on there. And number two, I mean, I don't even know why this is becoming this dragged out, this long of a topic, but we're going to talk about um, Andy Martino and why he was wrong about his um, assertion that the Mets aren't going to spend more than $10 million and about how they're probably not going after a bat. Well, the fact is, I believe they are going after a bat. The goal is that the Mets want to make the playoffs, and we have a video highlighting that coming up as well. Um, again, like and subscribe. I appreciate you. Um, it's going to be a fun season, and it's going to be interesting nonetheless. So stick around. Um, I can't thank you enough. And I know a couple of people have mentioned I got to get rid of the Christmas tree, but we're going to adapt that. I, I like Christmas trees. It'll be a, you know, should have been a Valentine's Day tree. Uh, it's probably going to turn into Easter tree, but nonetheless, uh, it just adds a little bit to the background. So have a great day. I will speak to you soon. Let's go Mets. And, you know, we got that exciting time coming. Spring is here or at least almost here. So I will speak to you soon. Have a good one.